And so when you are uh, having a dream that you're up upgrading, you know, that you have a new the house is new on the outside, but old on the inside. It's that you feel like you are upgrading your state of mind, right? You are upgrading your state of mind. However, the contents of your consciousness, the thoughts and emotions that make up that state of mind isn't really upgrading. So uh, Ayan Dockery, what I would suggest is identify what, what things you are trying to, how, how you are trying to progress and evolve spiritually, and then make sure that you are actually doing the work to upgrade and elevate your thoughts and emotions in, so that they align with this evolution you are trying to create for yourself. That's what I would highly suggest. What if you dream of a house with no roof and you can see the sky? Beautiful, beautiful. Well, the roof, so the attic or third floor represents superconscious mind. The roof will represent superconscious mind and the sky will represent superconscious mind. If there is no roof, then that means that the separation of the subconscious and conscious mind, because these are two halves to a whole, the aggressive and the feminine, two halves to a whole, universal law of duality. So the, this line here, which is represented by the firmament in the Bible, this line here is separates that the subconscious and conscious minds are two halves to a whole, and the superconscious mind is whole amongst itself. So your ability to connect with your spirit, there is no veil there. It's very easy for you to connect with your spirit. There is no roof. You know what I mean? You can just look straight into the sky and perceive what's going on. So it's a lot more free-flowing. So you're probably are very intuitive. You're probably... Uh, naturally kind of sense what you need to do in life and how you need to m move and navigate. Or at least that's what was what you were experiencing at the time that you had that dream. Dreamed about being chased by someone with no face. Ooh, has anyone else ever, ever had a dream being chased? Throw a C in the chat. Throw a C in the chat if you ever had a dream being chased by somebody. Throw a C in the chat if you ever had a dream being chased by somebody. I'm on a fast today, y'all, so I'm going to be drinking a lot of tea and a lot of water. <laughs> Throw a C. Okay, all type of people. So, like I said, in your dream, when you're going to sleep at night, your consciousness is shifting from your outer mind into your inner mind, right? And so you're, you're no longer experiencing things outside of yourself, but you're experiencing everything that's going on inside of yourself. So every person, place, or thing is, a, is an aspect of your own consciousness. So if you're running from something, it's something about yourself that you are running from not wanting to face, right? Where'd that dream go? See, that's why I like to uh, dream about being... Okay, here we go. So there's something you're not wanting to face. And it's probably hard for you to identify that. So you might not, you might hear that and be like, ah, uh, I don't really know what you're talking about. But that may, if that's so, then that may be because the person has no face. What's the face all about? The face is all about identity. You know what I mean? Y'all know it's me on the live because you see my face. You know what I mean? If I just put this up, you might, you might know it, or you might think it was one of them frauds out there. You know what I mean? But you see my face. You know what I mean? When you see someone's face, you can identify them. You can know who it is. You can see who it is, right? And so when you do that, you're, you're in your dream. When you see people who, like the parts of yourself that you're really familiar with, you know, like if I were to say, what kind of person are you, Matt? Like if I were to ask you what kind of person you were and you were to, to tell me, then those qualities would probably be portrayed within your dream by people that you're really close to because those are the parts of yourself that you're the most familiar with, right? So your family and friends, your family and friends in a dream are going to represent the parts of yourself, the aspects of your own personality, your own consciousness, you know, your, your own characteristics that you're most familiar with, familial, you know what I mean? So family and friends are going to represent parts you're most familiar with. Strangers are going to represent parts that you can you can kind of identify, but you it's not like every day, the way you act every day. You know, someone, but someone with no face means it's going to hard, be hard for you to identify. Like, for example, if, if when I was, when I was younger, uh, when I first started on this, on this journey, I, I was, you know, I'm a Taurus bull, so I'm very, you know, confrontational and things, but I'm also a very funny guy. I like to have fun, like to crack jokes and make everybody feel good, right? But being a Taurus bull and growing up, growing up in Cincinnati, I mean, if, if, if somebody stepped to me, I, hey, I'm pressing the issue, you know what I mean? and that's just how I was. But I would always, 
I would never I would never identify as that. You know what I mean? I would be like, nah, that person made me be that way. You know, that experience made me be that way. That circumstance made drew that out of me. I'm not like that. I'm not a confrontational person. I'm not an angry person. You know what I mean? And so I would just I would just never identify that way. So it was hard for me to see that that truly was a part of myself. Right. So for you in this dream, there's something that you're running from and you're not really wanting to admit and face that's really going on. That's really a part of who you are. And until you do admit that, you won't be able to change who you are. So when you when you stop running from yourself, turn around and face it and take a look at what it is. Exactly. That's a demon trying to <laughs> try to get. God's I mean, it might be it might be your own inner demon. But you, if it is, you need to face it. I mean, this guy trying to throw out fear. That's a demon. Like, bro, what you scared? Even if it was, what you scared of? So <laughs> I'm a divine being of the most high. I am a God. I will destroy and obliterate any demon that tries to come my way. You know what I mean, I suggest you do the same thing. You know what I mean? But anyways, yeah, I think I know what it is for sure. Beautiful, beautiful. Then I'm glad you found the live to be able to find that for yourself, man. And because what you want to do is face that and take a look and see you know, what it is exactly, and what what do you want to do about it? You know what I mean? Exactly. Left my ass off. It was, it's why it was weird. I don't back down from nothing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And so instead of being confrontational, because like at the time for me, I started to face that and realize, man, I'm 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 at times pushing away people that I love, you know what I mean? Or people or my friends. You know, and then um uh, and then I started making changes and, and things. Like I remember one time I was at work. And this one cat that I worked with, we was cool, but we would always get in these heated debates and it would get heated. And we started to get into one one day. I forget what it was. It was about like perception, like perceiving your reality and things. And he had said something. I said something else. And he, he looked at me. He's like, man, if that's what you believe, you a goddamn idiot. And, I, and normally I would have lashed back and said something or cracked something. You know I mean, something would have been jumping off. But I looked at him. I said, you know what? I'm going I'm to take a minute and think about what you said. And... And I'll come back to you and let you know. And if 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 you were right, I'll let you know. Uh, but I'm gonna I'm gonna take a minute to think. And I remember him just looking like he was stuck. And we we ain't never argue again ever ever after that ever. It was wild. But but I had to I had to not be so confrontational. I had to consciously choose to not move through these habitual patterns that had developed within me. You know. So that's what I suggest doing the same thing. You know, be more conscious and aware of the thoughts that are coming into your into your mind. And even if even if you don't become aware until after the, the event has happened, you can still reflect and be like, where did that thought come from that led me to act like that? You know what I mean? Where did that thought come from? What, did, what emotion was tied to that? What was really going on inside? And so that you can then better become aware and, and identify this thought that comes in before you act. You know, and so then that way you that's how you progress and grow. This is an interesting topic. What does it mean when other people losing hair in my dream? Okay, beautiful. So hair, hair represents your thoughts, right? And so losing hair is going to represent kind of letting go of thoughts. There's probably thoughts that you've been attached to that you are letting go of. And that's going to create space for new thoughts, more elevated thoughts to come into your mind. So I'm not sure, like the magazine, I'm not sure what it, what it is you're doing to elevate your consciousness, to, to elevate your way of thinking, to like let go of old thoughts that are no longer serving you. But whatever it is you're doing, keep it up, man. Keep it up, bro. Appreciate it. Real 100. Absolutely, man. I'm glad I'm glad you uh, enjoyed it. And thank you for the rose. Appreciate it. Oh, wow. Thanks. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. What does it mean when I don't seem to dream? Okay. So what it means when you don't seem to dream is that you probably uh, not have a strong memory. You probably don't give a lot of attention to your dreams. And you, maybe you don't even see the value in dreams. Hey, appreciate the love, y'all. Appreciate it. And so a couple of things that you can do, one, start writing down your dreams. And the way that you want to do that is write down, I will remember my dreams, right? Tomorrow's day, I will remember my dreams. This, writing down the date means you're setting an expectation. I expect to have something to write in here, subconscious mind. And then writing, I will remember my dreams, you are invoking it into existence. You're using your will to invoke it. You know I mean, that's how we create. We're made in the image and likeness of the creator. How did God create? Go to the creation story. How did God create? And then he said, let there be light. It said, God spoke, God spake, God said. It says it all throughout the whole creation story. And then it was so, and then it was done. God said, and then it was created. <laughs> God spoke. So he, the word, the, the word, your invocation, 
the power of the vibrations that you emanate within this and within this environment within this reality is what comes to pass so anyways <laughs> you are saying i will remember my dream so that you can invoke it in, in, into happening and then when you wake up write it down but also memory your memory your memory is going to be a huge thing you know so practice practice memory exercises Right? I have a five-day, five-step exercise that you can practice. Uh, you can go to the more info on my page. Go to my page. Go to the more info. There's an exclusive exercise. It's free for anybody. You just It's a memory exercise that will help anybody. Five-day, five-step. But it will also help you not to just increase your memory. It will help you become more present-minded. Because that's also going to help because your dreams are a reflection of how you're using your mind throughout the day. It's a direct reflection. What's going on inside your mind is going to reflect out into what you're going on in your reality. So... If you want to become more aware of what's going on in your dreams, if you're wanting to become more aware of your dreams themselves, then you need to become more aware and alert and awake and lucid throughout your day. What are you experiencing? You know what I mean? What are you experiencing? How do we experience? How do we experience this physical reality? Does anybody know? How do we experience this physical reality? We experience it through the six senses, through our sight, through our sound, through our taste, through our touch, through our smell. If you could not see anything and you could not hear anything, if your eyes stopped working and your ears start, stopped working and your tongue stopped working and your nose stopped working and your uh, ability to feel stopped working and your, and your mind, your conscious mind stopped working, you would not be able to experience anything in this physical reality. Nothing at all. And so we experience things through our senses. And so what are you seeing? What are you hearing? I mean, increase your awareness of the physical reality so that you can then increase your awareness of the non-physical subconscious reality. You know what I mean? And this ain't just, you know, this just ain't just the star of David. This is in every holy scripture. I just made a video about this earlier. This is in every holy scripture. You know what I mean? The, the, eye, of, the eye of Ra. You know what I mean? You got the nose. You got the finger. You got the tongue. You got the eye. You got the... Anyways, man, it's, it's all up in here, man. It's all up in here. But let's go back to where we were at. So that's what I would suggest is practice that practice, practice, uh, becoming more present minded, working with your dreams, pay attention to your dreams, because whether you remember them or not, you're dreaming, you're having a dream, whether you remember it or not, your consciousness don't need to sleep. Your consciousness don't need to sleep. All right, Sean, I, I, I done seen this pop up like seven times while I was giving that last answer, bro. You don't, you don't use your will to make it happen. Beautiful. I appreciate it. Let's clap it up for Sean, boy. He got a strong will. He said, I don't give a damn how long I'm on this live. I'm getting this one interpreted right here. <laughs> so he says, what does it mean to see a crocodile alligator in your dream? I used to have crocodiles and alligators in my dreams all the time. Have you ever heard of Baba G? Absolutely. One of the immortals in the, on the planet. <laughs> yes. Yes. The Lord God, Baba G. Absolutely. Man, he one of the oldest immortals, man. Baba G was around before Jesus. Yeah. Oh, yeah, man. We can, we can talk about Baba G. Have you heard of Bartrigi? You know I mean? <laughs> Have you heard of him? <laughs> Bartrigi, another immortal. He da, he da, like every 700 years, he gathers all the people around and buries himself on his own house, on his own land, and then comes back a couple years later and moves back in. And he does it just to prove to people that immortality is real. But anyways, back to Sean. Sean, has anybody else ever had, a, had an alligator or a crocodile or a lion or a bear in their dream? Put an A in the chat for animals. If you ever had a big, powerful animal like that, like a cougar or a panther or a, a, a lion or a bear or a crocodile in your dream, let me know. Jessica Rose has. Let me know. Have you ever had that show up in your dream? Who else? Lyric. Lyrics. I almost all I said sabbatical. <laughs> I'm like, what, is this? what kind of name is that? Okay. Let's get back to Sean, though. Okay. So... Animals, not that I remember, animals, the Star of David looks similar to the Merkaba. Exactly, the Star of David is a two-dimensional figure of a uh, Merkaba, anyways, which is a fourth-dimensional uh, shape. But anyways, the uh, a crocodile or alligator, uh, animals represent habits because animals are habitual creatures. But we're also habitual creatures, right? We can be habitual. But what separates us from animals is our ability to speak the spoken word which allows us to have more power over the physical reality and what we create within it because of the vibrations we can emanate into the environment around us. But then also the imagination. The imagination. Animals can't imagine. 
That's why they're so habitual. You see squirrels being same same type of squirrels doing the same squirrel things in the same squirrel communities. You know what I mean? In the same part of your neighborhood. You know what I mean? And so animals are very habitual. But we can be habitual. So the uh, a crocodile or alligator or any other really powerful animal like that is going to represent ways in which you are being habitual. You are just the thoughts and emotions that are just running through your mind without you choosing to think them. You know what I mean? The way in which you're just habitually, you have habitual patterns. You know what I mean? The way you, the way you act in patterns. You know, you don't aren't consciously choosing to think this way. You know, like for example, whenever um, that, that uh, when I said I was real confrontational when I was younger, you know, I, that would show up as a bear in my dream. I didn't realize until a couple months into interpreting my dreams, but that would show up as a big bear in my dream because it was very, it was very habitual for me to be that way. I wasn't, you know, somebody didn't say something to me and I consciously thought, oh, you know what? I'm going to confront them on this and make a big issue and put my friendship and my job or whatever, my family at risk because I'm going to confront this person in a far highly more escalated uh, way that needs to happen. And so, no, it was just a habit. It would, the thought would come in and I would just react. You know what I mean? And so, it, and that has the power to change who I am. If, cause that's what these strong animals will represent a habit that's so strong and powerful. It can change who you are. You know what I mean? So like the reason I say that it can change that is because it has the power to, to, you know, terminate someone, you know, to unalive them. And so being unalived in a dream will represent, um, you know, change and transformation ways in which you are changing and transforming because when you are no longer in this physical body you are changing and transforming into a non-physical form you know you don't cease to exist you just no longer exist in this way your energy is transformed into just the non-physical the soul and the spirit so an animal like that is going to represent is that's what it's going to represent so you want to identify and and really look at what habits what what ways have you been acting that you really don't like to that was just like out of habit. You just habitually do this. You know, you just habitually think in this way. You habitually feel in this way. Like like someone who's depressed might have dreams of strong uh, animals like that because they aren't they aren't choosing to think these depressive thoughts, but it's just habitually continues to come up for them. This person's smart. They made their name notifications. <laughs> I was in here like notifications. I ain't never seen that. What does it mean when you have the same dream as someone else? Ah, so your dreams are reflections of how you've been using your mind so if you're having the same dream as someone else thank you very much you're very welcome sean so if you're having the same dream as someone else then it means that you are thinking in the same ways as someone else now there is a thing called dream walking where you can share dreams dream vis visitation dreams where you can meet up with someone else in their dream you can go and visit someone in their dream you know but that's a lot rarer and not as often but that could be what's happening that's for you to decide you know, because like I said earlier, I can tell you what the symbols mean, but only you can actually interpret your dream. Only you can identify how you've been using your own mind. Only you can identify what's been going on in your own life. Okay. What's this guy say? What should I do if I become aware in my dream? What's the first step? If you become aware in your dream, if you become lucid, lucid, having a lucid dream means that you are... Um, you know, in the dream and you know that you're in the dream. If you become aware in the dream, the very first step, what I would highly suggest is just stop for a second. You know, because if you, one, if you start to get excited, then you're going to pull yourself back to your body and you're going to wake up, boom, you're out of the dream. You know, if you start going around changing things, you know what I mean, then, then you're going to affect the dream and the message that your subconscious mind has for you. If you become lucid in a dream, what I would suggest is just stop for a minute, allow the dream to flow how it naturally flows. And use your lucidity to gather more details of the dream. If you see someone in the dream, ask them who they are. You know what I mean? If you see something going on, ask what's happening. You know what I mean? And so use your lucidity like that. I stopped and asked them who, who they all were. Beautiful. Good. Good. Sleep paralysis? Yes, what about it? Sleep paralysis is just one thing that happens to everybody when they fall asleep, unless you're someone who uh, sleepwalks. But most people are unconscious, so they have no clue that it's going on. It happens every single night. Recurring dreams of swimming into the darkness to a cave. Oh, wow. Hey, I bet. Hey, watch this, y'all. I bet. I don't know nothing about this person, but I bet you meditate uh, in some way. Random, ordinary person. <laughs> I bet this random, ordinary person meditates in some kind of way. Because 
the earth will represent the subconscious mind, right? And and water will represent the conscious mind. And so, hey, let me pull this up for y'all. All right, this is almost always done by meditation, right? You have the water, the physical reality representing the water, conscious mind, and then all of this here is the subconscious mind representing the earth. So your ability to create space and go into the earth through your life experiences that you're swimming. So you're, pro you're, you're making progress in your life experiences and it's allowing you to go deeper into the cave. So going deeper into the mind. So what I would suggest is, yeah, continue to go deeper within your, um, with your meditations. Continue to go deeper with your meditations.